Now something incredible has just happened. I've just hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so much to every single one of you for watching the videos and subscribing. Now I have a little bit of an issue now because the flight that I was due to be on today was cancelled about a week ago um, down to Buenos Aires. So I booked an alternative, something that was really cool and really interesting. And guess what happened? That flight was cancelled this morning. So I need to get to Buenos Aires. So I've decided to come to Madrid because it's kind of home of all flights to South America and see how on earth we can get to Buenos Aires. I'd just like to say a big thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. More about their excellent VPN service later in the video. Right, so there is one flight tonight that has seats available that can get me to Buenos Aires in time for my connecting flight tomorrow. It's with an airline called Boa Boliviana. They are the Bolivian National Airline. So it's a flight from here in Madrid across to Bolivia, hopping across Bolivia and then down to Buenos Aires. Hola. Hola. Perfect. The lounge is Iberia Lounge. Oh, is it Velasquez Lounge? Yes. Ah, yes, I've been yeah, there before. That's yes. right. Perfect. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. We're going to Bolivia. Let's go. So first stop tonight is a place called Cochabamba, which I have to say sounds very fun. It sounds like some sort of Cuban nightclub. Um, but it's the name of a city in Bolivia, and I think I'm wearing the right shirt to visit somewhere as exotic and party sounding as Cochabamba. As I headed to the lounge, I soon discovered that life in Cochabamba right now wasn't quite as fun as I'd imagined. So since posting on Insta about um, my unscheduled trip to Bolivia, I've had loads of people, more than usual, saying, be careful, um, take care, be really careful. And I'm thinking, okay, what's going on? It turns out there is kind of a massive um, load of civil unrest going on over in Bolivia at the moment. The president has been ousted, there's some sort of coup going on, um, there's riots in the streets, food shortages, this is like, a little bit worrying really since I'm going to be spending the next 24 hours there so um, yeah a little bit nervous now in other news people keep telling me that they love the shirt I don't know whether that's a good thing or <laughs> whether they're just being sarcastic but I'm taking it as a good thing okay time to go I've just started boarding the flight so we're off to Bolivia my ride to Bolivia tonight was this 25 year old Boeing 767 it was delivered in 1994 to Alitalia and has since flown for Varig and Tam before going to Boliviana in 2014. Oh dear God. The gate area was absolute chaos, but as soon as somebody saw my business class boarding pass, the ocean of passengers miraculously parted and I was waved to the front. Gracias. Gracias. Thank you. Here we go, boarding Boliviana Boa. Next stop, Cochabamba. Hola, buenas tardes. Thank you. The business class cabin on the Boliviana 767 is in a 212 configuration with just two rows. So on board the Boa 767. It's interesting how they've um, placed all the sick bags on prominent display on all the seats. How bad is this flight going to be? And safety cards relegated right to the back. <laughs> There's the priority, sick bag first. Um, consider how you're going to get out of the plane. Oh, and the entire row of economy behind me is full of screaming babies as well. Yay. This is going to be a great flight. I was handed out form number 250 to complete, which basically ensured I wasn't smuggling millions of pounds of cash or other substances into Bolivia. Right, doors closed. Doors closed. We're on our way. Fairly soon, we pushed back and started our taxi out to the runway. 779 to the city of Cochabamba, connection. El cinturón se abrocha insertando la parte plana dentro de la villa. We've not even started our taxi yet. 11 more hours.
Our route tonight then took us across Portugal to cross the North Atlantic Ocean. We crossed the Canary Islands and Cape Verde before crossing the South Atlantic towards Brazil. We crossed Brazil and commenced our descent over Bolivia into Cochabamba with a flight time tonight of 11 hours and 18 minutes at a cruising altitude of 36 and 38,000 feet. So update on the situation then, we are airborne out of Madrid. Um, the kids haven't stopped screaming behind me and it's very retro so far, it's like going back to the 90s. Um, they've just handed out some blankets and some pillows, which is nice. Oh, so, uh, are you going to take the dinner? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. We have uh, pork, yeah. and we have pot uh, potatoes, okay. um, bacalao, do you know what is bacalao? Uh, Fish. Okay, take the pork, please. Uh, pork, that's the first one, yeah. So a quick look around the seat then here on the Boliviana 76 and it's very dated I think is the word to say. So down here we have the seat control. I use that word in a singular form because all it does is recline the back and lift the feet up like so. We have what every airline from the 1990s needs here. Nice little ash tree. No idea what this is for. I don't know if that's to keep the engines running. If we have an engine failure, you just keep everybody turns those and keeps them spinning around. I don't know. At the side of the seats, we have remote control for the audio. Over there, you've got the um, movie screen at the front of the cabin. And does it have personal TVs? No. Power sockets? Um, no, we don't have those either. USB sockets? <laughs> You're joking. No, absolutely not. Um, it's not got much, and it doesn't lie flat either. It comes fitted with seat belts. Very similar to any other plane. We have our sickness bags. You even get a safety card. and a, something about the Zika virus, that's a worry. And these really cool sick bags. Did I mention the sick bags? But never mind. I'm gonna try my best to get a decent night's sleep. It can't be any worse than Norwegian's premium economy flight, surely. The seats were fairly similar to Norwegian's premium economy, albeit without power sockets. The overhead bins were the original ones fitted to the very first Boeing 767s. The immunity kits were brought around and to be honest they were pretty well packed with goodies. Aside from the branded eye mask, socks, hairbrush and toothpaste, there was a shoehorn and an empty bottle of cologne. The tray table couldn't exactly be called particularly flat, which meant that my dinner ended up being a little wonky. Aside from the undercooked potatoes though, it was a relatively nice meal. The pork was delicious, and hot bread rolls with butter are always a bonus. The white wine was pretty decent too. Dessert was a cheesecake which was also really pleasant. Although there's Wi-Fi on board Boa, it only gives you information about Boliviana and their fleet of Boeing aircraft, which presumably refers to the way that the aircraft bounds when they land. On the subject of Wi-Fi, thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Surfshark's a VPN service that makes online privacy protection easy and attainable. 
Surfshark encrypts all your internet traffic sent to and from your devices and makes sure that your IP address remains hidden to make sure nobody can see what you do online. On top of that, they block ads, trackers, malware and phishing attempts and, unlike other VPN services, you can use it on as many devices as you'd like at the same time. Surfshark helps you when you're travelling in three ways. It saves mobile roaming data and ensures faster browsing by blocking ads. It protects you from data thieves who seek for your passwords, credit cards, information or while using public Wi-Fi. It also lets you access your favourite content online just as if you've never left home, for instance Netflix, BBC iPlayer and many more. Even when you're at home it lets you access entertainment from around the world, for instance you can watch shows that are on the US version of Netflix but not on the UK version. Of course it's also great for protecting your identity online. Surfshark has a hack lock system which sends you alerts anytime your email address or password is being compromised. Click on the link in the description or go to surfshark.deals slash noelphillips and use my promo code noelphillips to sign up for 83% off and one extra month for free. So I've had my dinner, it's time to try and get some sleep. <laughs> What's that? I don't think I'm going to get any sleep on this flight whatsoever. <laughs> Okay, let's see. The seat is not massively comfortable. Um, this is as far as it reclines. Look at those seats in front of me. It just kind of semi-reclines. Doesn't go anywhere near a flat bed, but we get spoiled these days, don't we? I think how people in business class used to have to travel 25 years ago. And just pretend you're back then. We land in about nine hours. Let's see, just whether I can manage any sleep on this flight. Good night. Two hours into the flight, that damn kid still hasn't shut up screaming behind me. So it's now 3 a.m. About five hours left to run. Screaming baby seems to have stopped, at least temporarily. It's now been replaced by somebody playing a TV show or a movie on their tablet or phone at full blast with no headphones in. He's back. About an hour and hour until we land. Just been woken up by the flight attendant. Yeah. Breakfast was formed of this quiche, which was really nice. There was also a strange sandwich that didn't taste that great. You also get a small bowl of fruit and some hot bread rolls. So just before I woke up when I was asleep, I actually um, had the dream that when I got to Cochabamba, I went for a walk outside the airport and ended up getting shot at. <laughs> Not that it's playing on my mind or anything, but um, so Cochabamba Airport is quite small and you can only actually fly into there from Europe, from Madrid. Outbound, the planes have to stop somewhere else. Um, Santa Cruz, I believe, Viru Viru and they refuel there and then head across to Madrid because the runway is just not long enough to take a long haul flight. Pretty soon we were on our approach to the city of Cochabamba in Bolivia.
I followed the signs for transit passengers which strangely just led me right to the back of the beginning of the passport control queue once again. The door was wide open which seemed that it would be possible to just let anybody straight into the country without going through passport control. I was soon found by an employee though who directed me to go through customs to landside before re-clearing security. I was landside in Bolivia which was a little nerve wracking but I dared to go and step outside the terminal at least for a few seconds before I bottled it and headed straight back inside. Once back through security, I headed for the gate. So then here at the Copa, Copa Cabana, oh no it's not the wrong place, Cocha, Cabam, Cocha Bamba. That's where we are. Waiting for my next flight now. Um, so the next leg is a 737-300 Classic from here to across to Santa Cruz Viru Viru Airport which is in the east of the country. Um, I have to say so far I was a little bit nervous about coming here but nothing is happening it's just like normal. Um, I even stepped outside just to say I've done it and <laughs> it's okay here at least. I mean I, I imagine it's worse as you go out of the airports into the towns and things but here at the airport it's, you wouldn't tell that there was anything going on at the moment here. So I'm a little bit confused now, um, my next flight is just a domestic flight and yet I've just been stamped out of the country at passport control before I came through to this gate. This plane seems to be going from an international gate even though I have to change planes in Santa Cruz. So I'm not entirely sure what the reason for this is. Um, a little bit nervous because I've now officially been stamped out of Bolivia. Um, but I'm taking a domestic flight, so what happens when I get to Santa Cruz and I have to go through passport control again, presumably to get out of Bolivia, actually, you know, for real. It was soon time to board my flight to Santa Cruz. Gracias. Like my previous flights through Africa, you board by walking straight across the tarmac, an aviation geek's dream. My ride to Santa Cruz today was this Boeing 737-300, originally delivered to British Airways in 1997 as registration number GOAMS. It then went on to Air New Zealand in 2002 and finally to Boliviana in 2015. Right, so on board and legroom's pretty decent, got a lot of space. Seat's pretty comfy too, right down here at the back of the old 737-300. As we waited to depart, I was stunned by the sheer variety of cargo being loaded into the hold. There were huge bags full of plants, as well as numerous boxes of goods. I was soon joined by my seatmate, which made it slightly less comfortable than I'd originally thought. incredibly long today considering that Cochabamba sits at almost 9,000 feet in altitude. 
Our route to Santa Cruz today was fairly direct, heading directly east for the short flight. We cruised today at 26,000 feet with a flight time of 26 minutes. There was a snack service and drinks on this short flight. We soon arrived in Santa Cruz and flew directly over the airport before beginning our approach. So connecting here in Santa Cruz de la Sierra Vira Vira Airport. Um, it was really weird, it's like a security checkpoint and you put your bag on it and it goes through and nobody's checking the screens. You walk through with all of the electronics on you, it sets the alarms off and they just wave you on. What is the point of that? I have no idea. Passport situation is fine, um, they just waved me through, they just asked if I'd been stamped out in Kosher, out of the last place, so and I said yeah, showed them the stamp and yeah, it was fine, straight through, so looks like they are starting to board. Next flight now, down to Buenos Aires, so I'm going to head down. Next flight is on a Boeing 767, um, same type as the one I came over from Madrid on, but in economy class this time, so this will be the third product of um, Boas that I've been able to try out. So that's the long, long haul business class already, the short haul economy class and now the long haul economy class. So let's head down to the gate and see how it goes. Boarding was fairly confusing today as groups one and two were separated in the queue, but group two was strangely allowed to board first. Finally I was able to board and made my way down the jet bridge to today's ride. Speaking of which, my ride to Buenos Aires today was a 24 year old Boeing 767 originally delivered to Royal Brunei in 1996. It's since flown for Air Mauritius, Air Algerie, Vietnam Airlines, Skymark Airlines in Japan, Varig, Gol and Nordwind Airlines in Russia, before finally going to Boliviana in 2016. It's had quite an interesting life. So last leg down to Buenos Aires, lower 767 economy class, look at the leg room, it's insane. So if it wasn't hot enough already with the um, APU running, the APU just shut down and lights out. The cargo was loaded on and it was soon time to push back for today's flight. I don't know what's going on but um, they seem to be having some serious problems with this plane. Push back. One engine started, I think, but not the other. And it is sweltering hot, there's no air conditioning on or anything. Oh, unbelievable. Really hope we get going soon because this heat is just unbearable. It must be like 40, 50 degrees inside this plane, it's just horrendous. It was getting incredibly hot on board, and the crew came around handing out water. Drinking it just wasn't cutting it anymore. Finally the engines were started though and we taxied out of the runway.
route down to Buenos Aires today took us south out of Santa Cruz into Argentina and down towards Buenos Aires. Flight time today was 2 hours and 41 minutes at a cruising altitude of 37 and 39,000 feet. Now I don't know what it is about Bolivians and playing movies out loud. I mean, do they not have headphones in Bolivia? Have they not reached this part of the world yet? <laughs> it's crazy. It's every flight I've been on now has had people playing movies on full blast on their phone or something. It's like, really? We don't all want to listen to it. We have, if we look down here, the remote control for the audio, though there is no video playing at the moment. Uh, the seats do recline, a decent amount at the back here. Nice big tray table as well. It's alright this. There was a snack service today of a sandwich and more cookies. Seven miles down there, out the window. Bolivia is not a peaceful place right now. There are protests. There are talk of a military coup. There is civil unrest across the entire country and violence everywhere. And yet this is the thing about flying. I'm sat up here on a plane just seven miles above that, but it could always be another world. It's just, the world is just such a peaceful place at 35,000 feet, and it's why I love flying so much. It's almost like escapism, and I like that. Pretty soon we commenced our descent down into Buenos Aires. from Madrid to Buenos Aires cost me £1,100 or about US$1,500. This was for a distance of 7,000 miles, making a cost per mile of 17 pence. As we pulled onto stand, the APU issues continued as the engine stayed running and the power kept tripping and coming back on again for several minutes. Overall, this was a fun but exhausting way of getting to Argentina. It was really interesting to fly on Boliviana and despite the moaning I did actually enjoy my flight across Bolivia. The crew was so friendly and every member of staff I met throughout the journey was so incredibly helpful. Yes you could probably take this trip in luxury on Avianca, Iberia or Latam but would it be anywhere near as fun as three flights on ancient aircraft through an exotic country like Bolivia? I took a cab to downtown Buenos Aires where my hotel was waiting for me. So here then at my hotel in downtown Buenos Aires, Boliviana, well, they were nowhere near as bad as I expected they would be, which is a good thing, really. Um, their business class product was shoddy to say the least, but hey, you don't fly with airlines like that for luxury and flatbeds. If you want that, you fly with Iberia or Avianca. You take airlines like this for the novelty factor, I guess. 
Let me know what you thought to Boa Boliviana in the comments section down below. Is that an airline you'd like to try? Um, and also, if you've got any other random airlines around the world that um, you would like me to go and try out and fly, I'd love to see your suggestions for those down in the comments. In the meantime, as always, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.